And who are you and what are you running for? And tell us about yourself. Hello, I'm Betsy Farner. I'm running for Lake County School Board District 4. And I, have, I am a retired school teacher. Okay. I've been teaching for 37 years in the public school system. And I've noticed teaching in the public school system, when I used to teach elementary, I used to teach U.S. history. I taught the American Revolution. And now I've noticed, after teaching middle and high school, that these things aren't being taught anymore. And I really feel like I would be a great candidate for us to bring this stuff back into the public school system. I like to fix the public school system. Um, what do you think is wrong that needs fixing? Well, in Lake County. In Lake County, for one thing, um, the dropout rate has increased since I've been teaching at the high school. Okay. Um, yes, we have the. Which school? Tavares High School. Ah, okay. Yeah, and it's not just Tavares High, we're talking throughout Lake County. And we have the second to the lowest graduation, graduate, graduation rate um, in the five surrounding counties. Volusia County is lower than us. So I would like to address that. I'd like to take a look at the budget and see which federal and which um, state monies are coming in and how they are being accessed because I think we need to spend more money on students. And um, we keep losing good teachers too because we are the lowest paid county in the surrounding counties. Mm -hmm. And you can't get, keep good teachers and expect your school system to be a, a school system if um, you don't at least try to increase their pay. So we really will be looking at federal and state monies to do that. I don't want to have to increase the millage rate in any respect. And um, as I said, I've been teaching for 37 years. 33 of those years I've been in Lake County schools. I've taught elementary. I've taught middle school. I've taught high school. I just finished my 15th year at Tavares High School. Go Bulldogs. <laughs> and uh, I've taught gifted. I've taught the lower quartel and everything in between. So that's why I, one of the many reasons that I am qualified for this position. I know what it's like to have a good relationship with a student and a parent and everybody work together. I know how the parents feel and I know how the students feel. And it's time we start having a community outreach where maybe we can get volunteers coming into the classrooms in elementary having like grandmothers reading to uh, kindergarten students and first grade students. Some of these students don't even have access to actual books anymore because everything is on online, on a tablet. tablet. Um, well, now, have you had a chance, because the two main uh, tasks of the um, school board, and I've been going to their meetings for like 12 years, is to set policy and to pass and approve the budget. Have you had a chance to review the budget so that you're familiar with uh, what's in there and how it works and the limitations? I have reviewed the budget. I, I need to look at it even more, but I know we have... I won't ask you individual pages yet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a little over a $700 million budget. Mm -hmm. um, most of the monies are coming from the state. Um, the federal government gives us a good portion of money, too. And I have some friends of mine who are very data, um, they, they understand data and mm -hmm. budgets, and they're taking a look at it for me to try to figure out exactly where everything's going. And they actually have some spreadsheets ready for me that I need to print up. Because, again, I don't want to have to use our local money, because then that would mean the millage rate would go up. Any other question? No, uh, I think that's pretty good. So uh, one last thing is, what's your name and what you're running for, and uh, should people vote for you? Yes. I would appreciate your support. I am Betsy Farner, and again, I am running for Lake County Schools um, School Board District 4. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Okay, Betsy Parker.
candidate for school board in what district? District 4. And you have several opponents. I do. I have three opponents. Okay. All Republicans. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you want to give your elevator speech? Sure. And then we'll ask you questions. And okay. Please be respectful with the questions. No gotchas. Well, I am a Republican. It's <laughs> how to be a Republican. I'm conservative. And I would like to see us fix Lake County Schools. We really need to decrease the dropout rate, which will bring up the graduation rate. And, um, you know, after being in the classroom for 37 years, I've just seen things deteriorate from attendance to discipline issues, and I know a lot of it is society, but um, after teaching for 37 years, and uh, I have leadership skills on Lake Swan Water Conservation District, I was on that federally elected district for 12 years as a supervisor, and then the last four years as a chairperson, and you know, we did work with a more simple budget then. Um, we had cost share programs and things such as that. Our budget wasn't that complicating. We got most of our money from the Board of County Commissioners from the county. Um, but we did have, you know, some federal dollars coming in. It was a, a federal office. And our primary goal there was to um, conserve water as well as soil. Now in Florida, both are very, very important for agriculture and then of course keeping our waters pristine and, and clean. Um, also, um, I'm national board certified, and if anyone is an educator, you know that that's just as rigorous or challenging as um, getting your master's, which I do have my master's in the curriculum. So I have a perspective from a school teacher and from a parent, because I had um, three of my own children who all graduated from Lake County Schools, as well as my husband. Uh, I'm from Pennsylvania originally, so I moved down here in 87. Um, I think that's about it. I just really want to fix things in Lake County Schools. Mm -hmm. What are the priorities for fixing? What would you want to work on first? What, well, what's I, broken? And then how would yeah. you fix what's broken? Now, yeah. if this wouldn't be COVID times, if we were talking a year ago, uh, mm -hmm. we have big <clears throat> attendance issues or lack of attendance and truancy. And the monies have been cut. We don't have as many um, social workers to be able to go to people's houses and say, you know, your child has not been in school. We used to have a really good one, Alicia Croker, and she would go there and she would just say, look, I will see you in court if your child doesn't show up to school, if they miss well, any more days. Good. Right, but we, the monies have been cut and now the social workers have more schools they have to, you know, serve. Um, so attendance, they, they just have to be accountable. If they don't show up, they're not going to graduate. They're not going to pass. They're what gonna, are, who cut what the are money? the incentives that are used for attendance for the schools? We used to have a really good attendance <coughs> policy. And the last four years, it's really gone downhill. Um, the incentive was, like, if you miss three days, you had to have, after that, a doctor's note. You know, three days, you could have a parent note. And a, you know, an excuse. Then after that, it had to be a doctor's note. So kids just knew, like, if they got sick, I always told my kids, my personal biological offspring, I'm like, you need to just go to the doctor first time and start out with a doctor's note. So those days that you just don't feel well and you might have a tummy bug or something, then I'll write a parent note. But that was incentive to keep them coming. And, and then we did have social workers that would contact. And, and there is... Um, they can lose their privilege to drive if they miss so many days, but again, because we have fewer people to get on that, a lot of that stuff just gets, you know, slid under the rug. Yes, sir. Sorry, I hate being called sir. I'm sorry. I spent too long as an army sergeant to like that. <laughs> you, you work for a living, <laughs> Not no more, I don't. No, but I said that's what they used to say. Yes, don't call me sir. <laughs> Uh, has anybody yeah. thought of making schools better for the children to want to go there? No. Not make them go there, but make it so they want to go there. Now, I know I'm an old part, but <laughs> when I was young, I mean, there were days when I didn't want to go to school. Right. When it was oh, yeah, was. 85 degrees out and yeah. the surf was about three feet high in St. Pete Bay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to go to school. But 
Usually, I love to go to school for the things that I learn. I enjoyed learning. My son and my daughter both dropped out of Lake County schools. Aww. Yeah, that, that was not my reaction. And after talking to my son and over the years and learning, I am not, I've never been a supporter of public education. Ever since FDR turned it into a social institution, I have not liked the public school system, or those who run it. If I had my way, we'd tell the federal government to take their money and tell them what they could do with it. We will run our schools the way we like, the way we want. Do you have a question for her about the Lake County school system? No, ma'am. I was just spouting off. <laughs> well, that's why we try to get the students involved in extracurricular activities. And now, you know, with COVID-19, I don't know how that's going to work, but if they're involved and we can get them involved in clubs and extracurricular activities, yeah. and as a science teacher, I always try to come up with fun labs that they could do yeah. hands-on, which I don't know how they're going to do that they're these days. chemistry lab up. <laughs> yeah. Don't oh, laugh, I they, did it. They love doing that. They love Well, I know. I did it too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you had a question? Yeah. I just wonder, do they have perfect attendance awards? If you've never, if you don't miss well, a day? Well, we used to. And I know when I taught at Tavares Elementary, I mean, I finished teaching at Tavares High on June 2nd, and mm -hmm. I'm retired now, but we had um, a patch that they would earn. And yeah. they could earn patches for their multiplication facts, um, their division facts subtraction, which is even harder than, you know, multiplication mm -hmm. and division, and addition facts. And you start off, you know, when they're younger, in first, second grade, they get their addition patch. The subtraction was always harder to get. And then multiplication was usually pretty easy and division. But we, they, yeah, they look forward to that. Because then we would have, on Fridays, we would have a, a ceremony in the media center. And we would, you know, present those and they'd be announced. They'd walk up and they'd get their patch and we'd get a picture of them. So, yeah, bringing more incentives like that. And I, I appreciate that because no, you're right. everybody doesn't get a... Um Trophy, so a participation check. Yeah. Right. So not guess. everybody. Nobody right. gets anything. And if they don't try to earn it, and then when they got into fifth grade, and I got <laughs> fifth grade, they could get a patch for knowing all the states and the capitals, mm -hmm. okay. which was good. Yeah. Where did that go? You know? All the awards. Yeah. I think it all it all was so time consuming for the teachers that right. they were forced to spend so much more time on curriculum. Something had to go. And when well, the incentives went. Exactly. And it became all business. The students weren't psychologically or emotionally prepared mm -hmm. for it. Back part. in the old, old, old days when discipline was so much stronger at home and kids mm -hmm. had to work to help the family, yeah, exactly. the discipline was not an issue at school. That was a break for them and they were mm -hmm. anxious to learn all they could. But children are raised differently now, yes, too. Yeah. So I'm those who that. have access to all of the video games are not going to be happy at a school where they are going to have to drill on something. It's right. the, the whole teaching has had to change. Yes, too. Is there a question? I disagree with that. Is there a question? I disagree with that. Just a minute. Marie had her hand up even before I'm wondering if maybe this, because of COVID-19, is a time to rethink the way we mm -hmm. educate. Oh, definitely. Period. Definitely. I mean, and um, we are. Yeah, and I'm not just talking about sanitation, but mm -hmm. Right. You know, Not a combination. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we should be giving the kids whatever that allotment of money is and go and um, go to school wherever you want to. I was thinking about that this morning, actually. We need to brainstorm mm -hmm. a better way of educating. We need to get yeah. some good ideas together because obviously the public school system is not working. I mean, and we do deserve to have a choice. I think every single family needs to have a choice if they want their child to go to charter school or parochial school. Mm -hmm. it, and, and that's an indicator that the public school system is failing, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And we've got to do something about it. I mean, one of the great things about the United States is that you can get a free education. You can, you know, earn your your um, diploma, but... But is it worth it? <laughs> well, that's a whole other... Um, no, it's not. Well, okay. Fifty years yeah, ago, yeah. you graduated well, from a university. You can get a decent job. No, my phone Don't keeps keep ringing. Keep <coughs> we sold. Yeah. I'm actually turning my phone off when I do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I'll ask questions since you've been teaching for such a long period. 
uh, what kind of changes have you seen and either the benefits or the negatives of when they rolled out Common Core and the change in the curriculum uh, and a lot of people and I've researched some of the textbooks they've removed a lot of things whether it's history or it's um, building up uh, much more importance for certain ethnic beliefs and uh, what do you is there have you seen a change in how that affects the kids and uh, maybe their orientation towards family versus believing government is the answer to everything well, there are more than one variable there I mean there are variables here the first thing was when the FCAT started we were told, and I can remember I was teaching fifth grade at Tavares Elementary at the time, and we were told that we had to double up on teaching math and teach it longer. So then we had to decide, because every day I started with spelling, and then we did um, reading, and then we did English, then we did math, went to lunch, came back, I read to them and did flashcards around the world, and then we would do science and social studies in the afternoon. After that, they said, you're going to have to you know, most likely cut out science and social studies or alternate. And that was with the FCAT. Then, after Common Core started, they were basically having to teach to the test because mm -hmm. the, a teacher's part of their salary and their pay yeah. de is dependent on how those those students um, score. So, yes, and so now they're not getting the history. They're not getting our precious American heritage. When I taught there, those kids memorized the preamble. Um, I had them do that for a grade. You know, they knew what the Constitution was. They knew what the America, American Revolution was. They knew what a red coat was. And when I talked to high school kids, like I was asking some seniors, and I think I've told some of you who were in here last week, I'm like, well, so do you know who, what a red coat was, and do you know about the American Revolution? And they thought a red coat was a beetle. <laughs> and, Water's world. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, I've seen it. And then there are social issues, too. And, you know, like Lou was saying, the family structure has broken down. It used to be you had usually two parents at home. And even when my kids were still in school, until my last one who graduated in 2012, I could see things like kids were starting to drop out more, you know, rampantly, I guess, at that time. And I was like, man, I couldn't believe it. I just had her, her junior year in marine science, and why did she drop out the senior year, you know? And, and I mean, and this was with two parents at home, too. And I'm like, what is happening? And I think drugs also played a something into that when you get in with the wrong crowd. Okay. So there are a lot of variables there. I hope I answered your question, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> well, that I'm happy. Can I say that you would support then a uh, voucher system and other uh, schools uh, that parents can have choice yes. for? Families need to have a choice. Yeah. Yeah. Parents yeah. need to have a choice. Yeah. That will make the it wouldn't be United States of America better. if it's we right. didn't have a choice, right? Exactly. Yes. Competition, it makes the, Competition the public schools better. better. I just happen to be from a family of educators. My, my maternal um, grandmother was a teacher, and she taught mm -hmm. me all the different levels in a little schoolhouse. Mm -hmm. And my mom was a school teacher. And I used to go in and volunteer when I was in high school in her classroom. And I just, it became a passion. Yeah. Okay. Well, if we get the government away from telling you what you exactly. Have to oh. oh, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. Our wonderful governor has a new plan, and I, I left some papers here before. It's called Best, and um, it's an acronym. Jeez, um, oh, now I, I can think of excellent student thinking. I think it's I forget what the B stands for right now, but anyhow, it's getting rid of Common Core. Good. And bringing back the basics. Oh. <coughs> so, I mean, we have got to fix the public school system because mm -hmm. that not every family can afford yes. to have the choice. Yeah. Right. Right. It's the advantage of having a young governor with little kids. He wants yes. his kids to get a better yeah, education. That's right. Right. His if wife does. <laughs> if elected, would you promise to be a champion for um, increased American history oh, yes. and civics? And oh, get rid of this old. stupid 1619 Oh, projects. my gosh, indubitably, yes. <laughs> no, oh, Bob Woodson, I, I've said this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, I love great. Bob Woodson, and he started yes. the 1776 yeah, program. Yeah, right. <coughs> and, yeah, oh, 1619, that's ridiculous. Oh. I mean, they don't even think about the indentured servants who came over here from Europe, you know, the Irish. And, that's right. And I, that, that used to be, 
I used to teach at fifth grade yeah. social remember studies Charles about Dickens, indentured servants. Remember the line from Charles Dickens says, "Well, aren't there any more indentured servants and people uh, to to put them into uh, what did they call it then? Uh, anyway, uh, people that were indigent." Yeah. Um, anyways, that. yeah, and these Smart. immigrants came over and, you know, being that they weren't bought, the families who had them didn't necessarily take good care of them right. as they would but if it, it was an actual it. slave. The slaves they paid for, they, that was their investment. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of indentured servants were not treated well. Yeah. And they could never make men's meet, and they ended up, even their kids ended up being indentured mm -hmm. into the same family. So, and that was part of what we taught. Did you talk to but, yes. Have you had a chance to uh, memorize the budget yet and comment about how they're going to deal with uh, falling off of revenues from the state? Uh, uh -huh. and this year they've got the money, but then there's it's going to be like a cliff. And have you uh, had a chance to even think about what solutions might be needed? I have to say I have been extremely busy, but I had just messaged Perry Baker I've had people who are bankers and people who used to be working in HR with budgets. I've asked them to help me look over it. I mean, I know that we get more money than anywhere from the state. We get $222 million. Federal government, not as much. And I was wanting to access or use that money and not mess with the local monies coming in. But I even called the finance director of Lake County Schools uh, twice and, and no return call. So Really? Well, so I'll, I'll I, so I, then I'm reaching out to Perry because he understands, yeah. you know, the number punching. But um, it is confusing, and I printed it out and I've given it to um, the two friends of mine who are used to punching numbers, and they they even said it makes your eyes go cross. Yeah. So I really need to talk to the finance director, but I did find somebody who works in the office. I used to teach with her husband at Ferry's High, so I'm going to reach out to her. I mean, did you see where the president's talking unprecedented amounts of money going to schools for this reopening? And they've already gotten money from the CARES Act. So um, when we hear them complaining all the time about money, 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 <clears throat> I know it's rough, but it's not as rough necessarily. It's, it's the unions it. complaining That's about That's why it. I really like it. You know, what, is, what are your thoughts about reopening the schools? We definitely need to reopen. There's oh, no yeah. doubt about it. We just, oh, I mean, yeah. if you have a, a child, <coughs> again, we have a lot of variables with COVID-19, but if you have a child who has um, a fragile immune system, of course you're going to have to take one of those choices. But they did negotiate four different choices. And some, one of them is where, you know, you may attend school. And I, I've been asking parents, when I run into parents, I'm like, do you have um, children in the public school system? I said, how do you feel about your child going back? I just um, interviewed a gentleman yesterday. And he said, I have no problem with it. My, my kids are healthy, strong, active, and I really don't have a problem with it. And I've, other parents, and even teachers who have students, the teachers that I talk to in our science department, they want to get back to school, and they want their children to get back mm -hmm. to school. I don't know if I answered that question. Though. <laughs> I'm a teacher. Oh, okay. that's interesting. Uh -huh. Okay, because I want to go back to work too. I See, think there should only be one option. Well, maybe two. One, you go back, or two, you stay home. Right. And that's it. Yeah. I mean, this is crazy to give them all yeah. these options. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the one where, especially in high school, because I know they have to have their electives. They have to earn electives like PE. They have to have so many PEs to graduate. But they have that one that they, where you go to campus a little bit of time to do your electives or maybe math and English, and then um, the rest of the time you do virtual. And then they have the option where the teacher, I think this is the one called distant learning, where the teacher has some you know, students actually in the classroom and does attendance and then Zoom or Google Meets, they can see the students there and they have to be accountable for their attendance. Those students need to show up and if they're not there they need to be marked absent. But I was talking earlier about the attendance policy. We used to have a good attendance policy. Are you a public school teacher? Yes. Or private? Yeah. And now it's like they can miss so many days and nothing happens. And that's right, wrong. so what do you, well, I don't know. I just, I've walked in on this. Yeah. <sighs> Things are crazy. I have grown children who have kids not in Lake County but in Pinellas or up in Connecticut. 
The one in Connecticut is going to homeschool, and the other ones are probably going to homeschool too. Because you don't want to start school, because our county is making us teachers learn Google Classroom. You know why we're learning Google Classroom? Because they know they're going to, we're going to stop. We're going to go to virtual. And I told my daughters, do not be jerking your child in and out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Don't go to school for a week or two, and then you got to start homeschooling. What are these parents who work? What I was just going to say, yeah. that doesn't yeah. get it. Why are parents not screaming and saying, we've got to go back to normal? That's Why is America question. not screaming? Exactly. What is wrong? Because there's a lot of misinformation out there. Yeah, there lies, is. lies. Yes. Because there's so many cases, cases, cases. Oh. Not yeah. how many sick people are there. He, My husband during did that, a whole bunch during of During the charts. swine flu, during swine flu, H1N1, the Obama and Biden administration cut off testing unless you presented with symptoms to the doctor or the hospital. And the reason they did that, they said, it, because they already knew it was an epidemic, there was no reason to keep, because it would just panic everybody. Now, if President Trump tried to do that, he would be tarred and feathered. Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it, it's, it, I think it is, it is a it's something to control the public and to frighten us. I, I just I, 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 yeah. I agree. Yeah. But if they're afraid, I mean, what's happening to our country? That what kind of people do we have in our country that are afraid of a virus? Snowflakes. Yeah. Yes, tons of oh, snowflakes. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, what are you going to do at school if you become, if you're on the school board? What are you going to do? About what? Yeah, about which. About well, let's talk teachers. I mean, education. Like, you're talking about COVID and going No, back. forget no, COVID. Wait, wait, wait. COVID is nothing you have control over. Your hands are, anybody, right. their hands are tied because politically, whatever they do, they're not going to win. So just in right. general? Yeah. Okay. And, well, yeah, I had already addressed this earlier. All right, I'm sorry. Don't address no, but it. But it's again. okay. I, first of all, we need to fix the attendance. We need to have a stronger attendance policy and make these parents and students accountable. Because if they don't show up, how are they ever going to graduate? They're not going to earn their credits, you know? And then that we need to increase our gradu graduation rate, so we need to decrease the, the dropout rate. And our dropout rate, it is in Lake County. It's like the fourth worst of all the surrounding counties, yeah, out of, like the surrounding ten counties. Yeah. And um, yeah, and, and it's worse than the state average. My husband and I were just looking at that yesterday, and it was I was like, wow, I couldn't believe. It. I can't remember the figure now. But it was worse than the state average. And then that attendance and then discipline. Um, I, I just noticed that the discipline issues have gotten worse and worse in our schools. Yeah. And it doesn't seem like, I, don't, I, I think our administrators are overworked because we should, on our campus, we should have had one more, it's very tight, we should have had one more administrator. But back like eight years ago or something, they cut administrators. That's when they cut the social workers and made them do more with, you know. You know, say, we're not doing this anymore. Yeah. And we have to be collective. Or we have power. That brings us to all of those things. All right, so I'm taking this out. Okay. Taking this home, so the primary is coming up. Yep.